This is AMD's worst kept secret. This is the Ryzen 7 9800X3D and spoiler alert, the gaming king is back and it's faster than ever. The 7800X3D has finally been dethroned. But by how much? Let's find out. Before all that, what's different with the Ryzen 7 9800X3D as compared to the previous generation 7800X3D? The major difference here is that with all previous generation 3D vCache chips, the cache was stacked on top of the CCD. What's different with the 9800X3D is it's the first 3D vCache chip to have the cache physically underneath the CCD. AMD claims that this makes it faster, much faster. As for pricing, the Ryzen 7 9800X3D is going to be going for around $479 when it launches. Spec-wise, the 9800X3D is an 8-core 16-threaded CPU with a base clock of around about 4.7 GHz and it should boost to around 5.2 GHz. The base clock here is around about 500 MHz higher than the previous gen 7800X3D. The Ryzen 7 9800X3D has a total of 104 megabytes of cache with a TDP of around 120 watts. The TDP is one thing though. I ran our one hour Cinebench stress test to see what the deal with power consumption was and over that hour, I saw the 9800X3D pulling about 122 watts across all cores and around about 146 watts for the entire package. Which leads us into Cinebench 2024 testing. In Cinebench 2024 multi-core, we see the 9800X3D scoring 1,297 points. This puts it at about 13600K levels of performance and about 15% faster than the previous generation 7800X3D. However, the 9800X3D is slower than Intel's new top dog, the 285K, by around about 85%. That said though, the 9800X3D also has around about 200% less CPU cores. So don't be fooled, Cinebench doesn't tell the whole story. In single core performance in Cinebench, it is a bit of a different story though. The 9800X3D is significantly faster than the previous generation 7800X3D. It's about 21% faster on average. However, the 9800X3D is slower than Intel's new top dog, the 285K, by about 7%. Right here is a benchmark that is really interesting because it shows the true speed of a CPU in a real world scenario, the Linux kernel compiler test. In this test, we compile the Linux 6.8 kernel from source using the Pharonix test suite. The 9800X3D compiles the kernel in around about 86 seconds, which is about 16% faster than the previous generation 7800X3D. Not a bad gen on gen uplift, especially because this CPU is not really designed for this task. The next thing was knowing what 3D performance looked like without any restrictions using this big old thing here, the RTX 4090 Founders Edition. We switched up our testing system a little bit for the 9800X3D. We did all of the tests with both Precision Boost, Overdrive, both enabled and disabled, and we didn't see a gain or a loss with it on or off, so we left it on. We tested everything with the same kit of G-Skilled Triton Z5 Neo at 6,000 mega transfers on this test bench here, the ASRock X870E Tai Chi for all of the testing. We also use this cooler right here for all the testing as well. I decided to run all of these tests at their lowest settings at 1080p and 1440p. And here's the reason why. With GPUs like this 4090 here, we're quite CPU bound at both 1080p and 1440p. And I was curious to see what that would look like without anything restricting it. Let's start off with Counter-Strike 2. This is a really good repeatable benchmark that's in the Steam Workshop that we use for all of our CPU testing. At 1080p, it's obvious that the 9800X3D is going to be the best choice here. What I wasn't anticipating was the jump in performance and I didn't realize it was gonna be so large. On average, the 9800X3D is around about 15% faster than the 7800X3D. The 1% lows aren't as impressive though at around about 3% uplift gen on gen. At 1440p, the difference between the 9800X3D and the 7800X3D is around about 15% again. For 1% lows, the 9800X3D is around about 4 to 5% faster on average as compared to the 7800X3D. To be honest, 
the 285k is is it's so bad it's not even worth mentioning at all moving on to shadow of the tomb raider at 1080p this benchmark is pretty old but it's really good at exposing weaknesses with cpus once again no surprises here with the 9800 x3d being the fastest part here on average it's about 13 percent faster than the 7800 x3d and around about wait for it 48% faster than the 285K. As for 1% lows, the 9800X3D is around about 21% faster than the 7800X3D. Jumping over to 1440p, we're seeing the 9800X3D be faster than the 7800X3D by around about 9% on average, with the difference in 1% lows being around about 15% faster than the 7800X3D. Moving on to Cyberpunk 2077, again, no surprises with the 9800X3D. It is the fastest chip at 1080p. It's around about 13% faster on average as compared to the 7800X3D. For 1% lows though, the difference is only about 5% here. At 1440p, we see the same pattern again with the 9800X3D being around about 12% faster on average as compared to the 7800X3D and around about 40% faster than the 285K. As for 1% lows, the 9800X3D is only about 1% faster than the 7800X3D. Onto Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p, we see something really interesting here. I'll start off with the 1% lows here, especially with the 7800X3D. No matter how many times I ran this benchmark, this was the same result. We had the same result when I tested the 9700X initially too. It may be a bit of an anomaly, but the result is here anyway. On average, the 9800X3D is around about 9% faster than the 7800X3D. At 1440p, the 9800X3D is around about 7% faster than the 7800X3D on average. As for 1% lows, the difference is around about 24%. It's such a strange variation in 1% low performance, but again, it is what it is. Finally, onto a game I've personally sunk quite literally hundreds of hours into, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. At 1080p, we're seeing the 9800X3D be around about 7% faster than the 7800X3D on average. As for the 1% lows, the difference is again around about 7% between the 9800X3D and the 7800X3D. At 1440p, we're seeing the 9800X3D leap ahead in performance being around about, wait for it, 26% faster on average. For 1% lows though, the difference is around about 15% between the 9800X3D and the 7800X3D. Finally, onto a five game average comparing all of the titles shown in the video, at 1080p, the Ryzen 7 9800X3D is around about 13% faster on average over the 7800X3D. And it's around about 37% faster than the 285K on average. 13% uplift gen on gen at 1080p is nothing to scoff at. As for 1440p, the gen on gen uplift between the 9800X3D and the 7800X3D is around about 14% on average. A pretty great overall result for the 9800X3D. This means that the AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D is the fastest CPU for gaming. AMD has done it again. What more do I have to say about it? It's a slam dunk for AMD after Intel's absolutely abysmal arrow leg launch. Here's the best thing about the 9800X3D though. It's not even that. It's the 7800X3D. Although newer is better here, and it shows that even though the 9800X3D blows the doors off everything else for gaming, the 7800X3D is still worth considering if you were thinking about upgrading to AM5. The Ryzen 7 7800X3D can still be had for around about 450 USD or around about 700 Aussie dollars at the time of filming this. The 9800X3D in the US is about 30 bucks more than the 7800X3D, but the kicker is this, wait for it. For approximately 7% more money than the 7800X3, on average, you get about 14% more performance if you go with the 9800X3D. And that alone is a pretty clever move from AMD. It's almost a no-brainer at this point. 
I think if you go either the 7800X3 or the 9800X3D, you're gonna be a happy camper. Not only that, if you're looking at the 9800X3D for tasks other than gaming, you are getting more performance. In the Linux kernel compile test, it's about 16% faster than the 7800X3D. And I know people will bang on about Cinebench scores, but the truth is Cinebench is purely synthetic. Compiling source code like the Linux kernel is something CPUs are actually designed to do. AMD said on average that the 9800X3D is about 9% better than the 7800X3D all around. I think they understated that on purpose. With saying that, guys, it feels really good to finally say something positive about a new CPU. It's kind of nice to say something positive about any tech in general. The AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D is an absolute beast. This is a slam dunk for AMD. So good work, AMD. I'm kind of glad you saved the best till last. The real question is, do I pull the 7800X3D out of my own gaming PC and swap it out for the 9800X3D? Let me know your thoughts.